Hey, I haven't seen you since last year. How you doing? I'm John Zadar. This is Sub Penny Buzz, and it is a new year. This is 2023. Happy New Year, folks. I hope you enjoyed your holiday season. Hope it was entertaining and relaxing. But it's time to get back to work. Now, I apologize for not being around for about the last week. You probably think I was on vacation somewhere having a dandy old good time. Well, I wasn't. I went to a Christmas party, first one in over 10 years, and I got sick. Me and a whole lot of other people got the flu, and we were on our backs for many days. So, it wasn't the best holiday for me, but I am back and feeling good and ready to jump back into the game. Now, during the week, we have a show called On Top and Hot where I share with you hot OTC and penny stocks. We're normally looking at stocks that catch my interest or other investors are watching. But here on Sub Penny Buzz, we come at it from a different direction. We're going to look at some stocks that viewers have asked me to look at. Stocks I've never heard of before. And when I jumped in and looked at them, I was like, ooh, these are pretty interesting. So I thought I'd share these with you as well. So let's jump on into this and let me show you what I found. We're going to be taking a look at these three stocks now, not for any catalyst that they have sitting on the table. None of them have any fresh news or new filings, though they do have stuff current, just nothing right now that's got them running. However, some of the stocks are even running and I can't figure out why, but it's good to see. Now, when I looked at these companies, I saw what the viewers saw potential big time. So I do want to share these with you and hopefully you're going to see it as well. Now, I'm not going to do any deep dives into any of these today, but we are going to cover enough information so you can see what they do, what condition they're in, and hopefully get your curiosity peaked up enough to do some more DD. Now, the first stock we're going to take a look at was brought to my attention by t Rick, my buddy, a loyal viewer indeed. He brought this to my attention because he knows how I feel about robots and artificial intelligence and things like this. I think it's where the future is going more and more and more until, well, we are a society of AI devices. And I think this fits right up there and they are in a good position right now. They look juicy, not perfect, but they do look juicy. So this is ticker S-O-U-N, Soundhound AI. They finished the day at $1.77 with 72% gains. That's a nice jump for not having any catalysts, right? And that's what drew my attention to it. Now, this is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. There's a few nice features about dealing with penny stocks on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. First off, they're free to trade. There are no transaction fees when you trade these major exchange stocks. Two, you get to trade pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. And let me tell you what, there's a lot of runners early in the morning on these NASDAQ New York Stock Exchange stocks, pre-market. And you can trade it. Yes, you can. You don't need any special qualifications or permissions. All you need to do is get in there. But remember this, before you place your order, you got to change the time period. It's not a day order anymore. It's day plus extension or good till canceled plus extension. You got to get extension in there or it'll just ignore your order. Otherwise, get in there and trade. Another thing that's great about this is that you normally get a warrant. S-O-U-N-W. That W on the end is added. That tells you it's a warrant. Warrants are normally a heck of a lot cheaper than the stock. This is at $1.77. This is going to be way, way cheaper. And warrants don't need as much volume to run big. So they're always an extra bonus in the game. So what does Soundhound AI do? Well, if we jump on into their most recent financial disclosure, they tell us here that Soundhound AI turns sound into understanding and actionable meaning. Soundhound's technology applications enable humans to interact with the things around them in the same way they interact with other people, by speaking naturally just having a conversation, a conversation with your mobile phone or your car. t 
television, music speakers, a conversation with your coffee machine, and every other part of the emerging connected world. Folks, this is where we've been heading for a long time. We just kind of got sidetracked with COVID and the wars in Russia. You know, we were doing the internet of things with 5G so that we didn't have to touch a button. We were going to be able to voice activate anything we wanted. And we're going to get there. I guarantee it. And this is the technology that's going to do it for us. The conversation voice AI platform is called Houndify. This is going to make just talking to these devices rather than feeling like you're talking to an inanimate object. It's going to sound like a person, feel like a person, respond like a person. And especially when we're not seeing the people like uh, drive up windows at restaurants, over the phone, maybe on the computer, um, kiosks, uh, these sort of things. There's going to be AI everywhere, but it's going to go further than that, folks. It's going to touch every aspect. Soon it'll be at your restaurant tables. So you won't need a waiter. Sorry to say. You'll just give your order right there. There's just, I can't even think of all the ways, but I'm sure when we jump into the website, they'll give me a few more ideas. Now they've got an app here, which is very similar to um, Shazam. Maybe you're familiar with Shazam. It's a song identification app. Maybe it does more. I never use it. But if you don't know the name of a song or who sings a song, you can use this app to listen to it and then it'll tell you all the information. Well, they tell us here that the Soundhound Music app not only allows its customers to identify the songs, but to play the songs simply by singing or humming into the phone. Now, of course, you can do it the old-fashioned way and you can let your phone listen to the song from some other device. That'll work as well. But the fact that it can determine what song I'm humming, folks, I don't know a whole lot of people that hum on key. <laughs> and it plays the songs. It doesn't just identify them. So that's a pretty impressive app. Now, there is another piece of information here worthy of noting. It was April 26th of this year that they closed a merger with Archimedes Tech SPAC Partners. Actually, it was one of Archimedes' companies and one of uh, Legacy's companies. The parties consummated a merger of ATSPC into Legacy Sound Hound. So I'm not quite sure what all that entails, but you can see they're still attracting other businesses, companies to join them. They're building themselves up. They are growing. Now, I want to point out one more thing here, and it's not very pretty, but we're not here to hype the stock. We're here to see the facts and just know what we need to know. If anybody ever tells you that I pump a stock because I'm paid to talk about it, that's a bunch of BS, folks. I have never, ever been paid to talk about any individual stock. Never. And I don't plan to, folks. I'm here to share information without any bias. That's the only reason it's worth anything to anybody as far as I'm concerned. So they tell us here they have a growing, going concern. <laughs> Since their inception, the company has generated recurring losses as of September 30th, 2022, for a three-month period, they lost $28.9 million. Over the nine-month period, they lost $84 million. With an accumulated deficit of $471 million. Whew, that's a lot of money, folks. No doubt that is a huge amount of debt. But I'm not worried about it because I've seen the companies that are surrounding this company. I see who they're doing business with. And I've always said, if successful companies are willing to do business with a company, that tells me that's going to be a successful company. I'll show you why I feel that about this one. But they do add this. Total cash and cash equivalents on hand as of September 30th, 2022 was $33.4 million. Although the company has incurred reoccurring losses each year since its inception, the company expects it will be able to fund its operations for at least the next 12 months. So come on. Yeah, they're carrying debt, but they can pay their way for the next 12 months. And who knows what can change in the next 12 months. I'm not talking world conditions. I'm talking the company. Things can change. And just like that, you can see revenues coming in, debt being paid, debt conversion. And all of a sudden, it's looking better than it's looking now. Now, let's jump on over to their website. So this is soundhound.com. This is their website, really laid out nicely. Got a lot of information, videos here. If you're interested in the company, I'd suggest you start your DD right here, as good a place as any.
Now there is a lot of information here and I'm not going to go through it all, but I want to cover a few key points. First, what makes this company different than all the other AI voice companies out there? Because there are others, they're not the only one obviously, but their technology is different. You see, most voice recognition technologies, when the AI hears the words, hears the sound, it changes them to text. And it goes and looks up the meaning of all those words that it just texted out. Then it combines them and correlates an answer and responds to you as quick and as fast as it possibly can doing it that route. And it's, it's clunky. It's not very accurate and it doesn't feel very good. This works completely different. As soon as you talk, there's a meaning, a definition to that sound already. Not the word, but the sound. So it works faster, quicker, and more accurately. Something else which is pretty interesting is that it works in different languages. So say you got a shoe store over in the Netherlands and you got people from Germany, Africa, and America calling. But you don't want an operator there 24 hours a day, so you institute an AI customer service. And as soon as you talk, it recognizes your language. And the next thing you know, you think you're talking to someone who speaks your language. It's not even a person, <laughs> but you're satisfied and you feel feel comfortable and that's what it's all about making the consumers feel comfortable now this is stretching off into every industry that you can imagine folks can't even think of them all uh, if you're booking transportation for airlines uh, at a gas station a restaurant working with mechanics there's just all sorts of ways I'm going to show you two examples in most recent news presses that they've had come out they're going in this direction and they're going in that direction and they're going to encompass all these industries because everybody wants to get a eye into their corner. It just makes things simpler. Now here's a list. I don't know if this is everybody. I don't think it is, but this is a list of companies they are working with, folks. Mercedes-Benz, Hyundai, Netflix, Qualcomm. Who's that? D Discover? No. Is that Visa? MasterCard? I don't know. Square? Motorola? Snap? Folks, these are huge Fortune 500 companies all working with SoundHound. How many more will probably want to work with SoundHound? Probably a lot more. Matter of fact, one of the pieces of news we're gonna look at expresses that fact immediately. So you've got a lot of companies that see the value in this company, and they do a lot of different things, and we're just getting started. We haven't even found everything it can do. So, what was the relative volume around this company today? Considering that it didn't have any news, oh, let me shrink this down. I had made our page bigger so that you could see that tiny print. There we go. All right, our relative volume. We are normally doing about 800,000 shares a day. Friday, we did 6.8 million shares without any catalyst. I don't understand it, but I do like to see it. Share structure with S-O-U-N. Well, I had to go look this one up on Google. It's not listed here, and it definitely isn't listed in the 10Ks or 10Qs. They don't list the floats, just the outstanding. So when I go to Google, you never know what's outdated. So I just look for the same number to be repeated as often as I can. Turns out the number that was repeated most often was 120 million. So we're gonna go with that for our float, 120 million. Financials for SoundHound. Well, she's got nothing on the annual, not a penny. Oh, but things have changed the second quarter of this year. First quarter, she was doing zip. Second quarter, she did 6.1 million. We know it's millions. We gotta add those three zeros behind any of the numbers down here. And then September's quarter, she did 11.1 million. And now we've just finished another quarter. I'd be very anxious to see the numbers. And you can see they're keeping money. They got to keep more than 50% here and way more than 50% here. So they are doing business. It is picking up. Looks like momentum is strong. What are our disclosures? All right, we did have some disclosures over here. These are form fours, folks. Form fours, and I'll go to the most recent one. They're all pretty much the same sort of thing. Form fours are when insiders, the management buy or sell shares. They have to tell us when they're moving shares. And if it's red, it means they sold. If it's green, that means they bought. Well, we can see that he sold. Every single one of those fours we just saw 
are them selling shares. However, there's a reason for it. You see this little tiny one? You can't. All right. You see that little tiny one right there? Well, if you click that one, it'll take you right to this and it tells you. The sale reported herein was made to satisfy tax withholding obligations in connection with vesting of shares of restricted stock units granted to the reporting person on August 4th, 2022 and September 7th, 2022. Tax obligations. There's not a whole lot of wiggle room there, folks. So it's not like they're selling because they don't believe in the company or they're trying to take the profits out of the company. All three of them said the same thing, tax obligations. So let's go take a look at the news. So I said I wanted to share two pieces of news with you. We had one come out in November. SoundHound and Harmon joined forces to deliver effortless conversational voice AI experience to auto customers. Then here in December, Yobe Inc. to feature SoundHound for restaurants, unlocking the value of voice technology in noisy public spaces. Let's take a look at that first one out in November. They tell us here that SoundHound AI, a global leader in voice artificial intelligence and Harman International, a wholly owned subsidiary of Samsung Electronics, which is focused on connected technologies and solutions for automotive, consumer and enterprise markets, today announced they will be working together to bring seamless natural voice AI experience to the automotive market. Working together, the two companies aim to create new voice AI-enabled possibilities for automakers looking to up-level their in-vehicle technology. With over 90% of new vehicles globally projected to have voice assistance by 2028, SoundHound and Harman will provide an exceptional customer-focused solution to automakers looking for a fully OEM-owned and branded in-vehicle experience. So you've got Samsung's subsidiary working now with SoundHound to take this technology to the automotive market, the, the original equipment manufacturers. And you know it's going to get there. Somebody's going to get that business. I think this company is in line for a big chunk of it. Now let's take a look at December's news. So this came out December 22nd. SoundHound AI, a global leader in voice artificial intelligence, will be coming together at the CES 2023 to demonstrate advanced voice technology for restaurants. Restaurant demand for voice AI is at a high. With automation fueling increased order volume and consistent levels of service amid industry challenges like labor shortages and rise in inflation. The SoundHound for Restaurants ordering platform allows restaurants of all sizes to integrate voice across channels including phone, drive through kiosk, and apps while working with a variety of different payment facilities. SoundHound has also recently announced Dynamic Interaction, a real-time, multi-model interface that incorporates not just the audio, but visual and touch, allowing restaurant customers to place orders including customizations and edits instantly and naturally. Our next generation voice technology can function seamlessly even in busy environments with competing noise. Folks, this is going to be huge. Restaurants are always looking for ways to make business smoother, to make the customer experience easier, and to save money. AI is going to be hot, and there are how many restaurants in America? A ton of them. How many car manufacturers? A lot of them. And how many people drive cars? Most of them. AI is going to saturate the markets everywhere. And this company has got big companies backing it up and moving their products around. I like what I see. Speaking of liking what I see, let me show you that chart. This is SOUN. We're going to be doing our charting on Think or Swim. That is a free trading platform TD Ameritrade gives you just for signing up for their free trading account. And your only obligation? Keep your account open. It's all you got to do and you can use this anytime you like. Absolutely free.
So we are looking at a six month, four hour chart here for SOUN. Back here in May, we got a high bubble of $19. That's not 19 cents, it's $19. And a low bubble about five days ago of 93 cents. And Friday, we closed out the day at $1.77. Now this was a serious run back here. Lots of volume, I mean a ton of it. And she ran from $5.80 up to $19. And I have no clue what it was about. But there was a lot of volatility and price activity back here. But when it ended, it ended hard. And she has basically been falling all of this time till now. And right now you can see our volume is starting to pick back up for no reason that's apparent. We don't have any new filings. We don't have any new news. But there was a lot of volume that came in today. Our price moved from underneath the 9-day to on top of the 50, just underneath the 200. Really nice move. Our technicals right now are really strong. Our PPO just had a crossover today. It is pushing up. MACD has just crossed the signal line today with lots of green bars holding her. And our RSI, look at this, folks, went from 41 one to 82. It actually doubled today. Wow. And our ADX, we've got a straight line here. That means that my trend has not changed direction. That's all this shows me. If the line doesn't change direction, it means the trend hasn't changed. Everything looks really good on the four hour chart. Take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot going on. She was dancing up and over the 50 all the way down to that low bubble and then worked her way back up over that 50. And boy, once she got over it, she took off. Didn't even slow down for the 200. <laughs> Rocket. She took off from a dollar to a dollar 93. You're looking at 93% gains at her high. She fell back a little and she let us keep about 72% of the gains, which isn't bad at all. Technicals are still very strong and hot. They show a little bit of signs of pullback, but they don't show that they're falling. Not quite yet. Five day, five minute. A whole lot of nothing going on here. Now, it's really tough to see how much the price has moved here because we've got this whole big bar sitting here and it squished all of this, but it was rising yesterday. And this morning when it took off, it took off strong. And at one o'clock in the afternoon, something happened. We don't know what because there's no tweets, there's no news, there's no filings, but a whole lot of attention came in. Look at all this volume at one o'clock, pushed the price from $1.22 up to $1.93 in 15 minutes no clue why. What I like here is where she settled, folks. She is right there on her 50-day SMA where this whole party started. Right there. She tied a little string to it, took a running jump, dragged that 50-day SMA up with her, and landed right on top of it. Looks beautiful to me. If this was the Olympics, I'd be holding up a 10 right now. Our technicals, they are weak. They don't show signs of falling, but they don't show signs of growing right now. But then we're not looking for a run tomorrow or this week. I mean, it could if the right sort of news comes out. It's catching attention for some reason. It caught my attention. And I believe this is going to be exploding in the future. I think every sector of all the industries are going to want AI for one reason or another. I think AI voice is going to be big, especially when it sounds human, feels human, acts human, especially when you can't see it and you're on the phone or doing drive up. Uh, get, get your burgers. Do you really care if it's a real person? You just want to get your order smoothly and accurately, right? So I think this is going to be a huge success. And don't forget, this company has a warrant. Let's throw that W on there just so we can get an idea of what the warrant was doing. That's today. Uh, yesterday, she was at a low Thursday. Thursday, she was at a low of about nine cents. And Friday, she hit a high of over 21 cents. You're looking at over 100% gains on Friday from the warrant, starting off at 9 cents to 21 cents, and she settled here at 16 cents. Just taking a back gander, just trying to see what it looks like over the last 20 days. A lot of volatility in there. A lot of bounces, but right now she's breaking that 200. Folks, I'd be watching this. I'd be keeping my eyes on this. It looks like she's ready to break out on the warrant. And warrants don't need a lot of volume. 
warrants do not need a lot of volume to give you hundreds, even thousands of percent gains. So I like both the warrant and the stock. I like them both for a long hold. I would do some more due diligence on this and I'm sure you're gonna like it as well. I may be wrong, I may be right. Our next stock of choice is ticker GREE, -E, Green Ridge Generation Holdings. Had never heard of this stock. It's even a bit outside of my comfort zone. But this was brought to my attention by nobody. I don't mean nobody. I mean a user who uses the handle nobody brought this to my attention. Thank you. I do appreciate it. As I said, it's a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but when I looked at it, wow, I could see the potential and I understand the situation. So yeah, I'm going to share this one with you as well. Ticker GREE, -E, Green Ridge Generation, finished the day at just about 29 cents with 5% gains. Now this too is a penny stock on the NASDAQ and whenever you see a stock on the major exchange under a dollar you've got to concern yourself with that. They've got a rule on the major exchanges called a minimum bid price requirement. If the stock is under a dollar for too long they can be yanked off the major exchanges and thrown down to the OTC market. It happens all the time. So we don't want it to be there for too long and this company hasn't been under a dollar for too long. Matter of fact four months ago they were at $4.20. 28 cents. Eight months ago, they were at $8.50, and right now they are at 29 cents. So, what does this company do? We're going to jump on over here and make use of all the information that Seeking Alpha has dug up on this company. It's going to make it easy. Now, the big thing going on right now with Gree is they're trying to avoid bankruptcy. They've had a lot of debt because, well, Bitcoin has fallen hard. All the coins they own are not worth as much as they used to be, and it's expensive now trying to mine them, especially since China is out of the game. They tell us here that the firm operates as a power generation company and a Bitcoin miner. The firm has brought in a new CEO and chief strategy officer in a potential shift in strategy. And this is what's most concerning to the investors. They realize something has to change, but what is it going to be? They go on to tell us that the company operates a power plant and has related data center operations in New York and South Carolina. The company seeks to use low carbon or zero carbon energy sources to power its Bitcoin mining facilities. Gree owns and operates a 106 megawatt power generating facility in Dresden, New York, which originally was a coal fired plant and has since been converted to a natural gas burning energy plant. The plant provides energy to neighboring communities as well as to the company's data center hosting Bitcoin mining operations. How convenient is that? Electricity is expensive for Bitcoin mining. Wouldn't it be nice to own your own electric company? <laughs> yeah, it would. The company is also building out its computing center at Spartanburg, South Carolina and has plans to develop at least 1.5x hash of mining capacity powered by 50 megawatts of mining and infrastructure by the first quarter of 2023. I hope that meant something to you because that was a little over my head. They go on to tell us down here a little more information about the company. Market capitalization, we are at $45 million for the market cap. Enterprise value, the company's worth $154 million. And operating cash, they've got $33, $34 million right now. They tell us that with the price of Bitcoin having dropped significantly from its previous highs, coupled with rising hash rate and related difficulty adjustment, the economics of mining Bitcoin have become much tougher and management seeks to leverage its existing infrastructure for the time being. Management has received strong lender support, which has provided us with additional liquidity by flattening out our amortization curve. As to its financial results, cryptocurrency mining revenue rose 43% year over year for the company, and the company has produced 621 bitcoins during the second quarter, nearly doubling that of the prior year's same quarter. For the balance sheet, the company finished a quarter with $67 million of cash and fair value of Bitcoin held in the treasury, but has debt of $176 million. So let's take a look at our share structure over here. 
All right, they do not list the float. Now, I couldn't find it anywhere. Could not find even one number. So I have no clue what the float is, but we do know it's going to be under 16 million. So it's a low float. But this is what's confusing. We just got done reading that the market cap was $45 million. Well, market cap is figured out by taking the outstanding share count and multiplying it times the price. Well, there's no way that 16 million times 29 cents comes out to 45 million. So I'm not quite sure where they got that market cap in that article. But in either case, we do have a low float over here. Financials for this company. All right, at the end of 2021, they did $107 million worth of revenue and they got to keep 73 million of it. On the quarterly, they're making money regularly, 37 million the first quarter, 31 the second, and 29 million the third quarter. And we got one more coming out. Again, I'll be interested in seeing that. So they are generating revenues. They are making money, but they're carrying a lot of debt and it's a bad balance right now and they're looking for a way to fix that. What was the relative volume around the company today? Oh, not very much. She's normally only doing 621,000 shares a day. Friday, she only did 455,000. So why am I really looking at this? Well, I'm looking at it because the charts show a lot of potential if Bitcoin turns around. If Bitcoin starts to rise and this stock follows Bitcoin, it falls when it falls, it rises when it rises, there could be a huge potential for gains with this stock. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go look at that chart. So we're looking at ticker GREE, -E, but we're looking at a one year, one day chart. One year ago, Bitcoin was going for about $50,000 a coin. One year ago, this stock was at $17.86. And since then, they have both been dropping and haven't really changed their trend yet. On our six month, four hour chart. Well, six months ago, we had a high of $8.78. Four months ago, we had a high of $4.90. And right now, we're under 30 cents. You're looking at 1,600% gains just to get back to there. Now, I'm not expecting it to happen anytime soon. I'm expecting that to happen when Bitcoin starts to rise and grow and grow. I expect this stock to do the same thing. So there's a lot of gains sitting on the table, reaching all of these plateaus that had made before. Now you can see there's lots of volume. There's no shortage of volume on this stock. It just doesn't seem to go anywhere. Uh, right now, our technicals, well, they actually show some heat. Our RSI has turned around. I'm not saying it's warm. It's at 45, but it has changed its direction pointing up. Our MACD is on the right side of the line trying to get up over the signal line. Doesn't look very strong, but what I do see here is my ADX is pushing down and my PPO is pushing up. You see the blue and red line here? Well, when they go apart, the price goes up 100% guaranteed. If the blue line is coming down and the red is coming up and they're getting closer and closer, the price is falling guaranteed. So we do see some inkling of heat here. <laughs> 20 day, one hour view. All right, so 20 days ago, she was at 67 cents, been falling all this time, hit a low bubble four days ago, and actually jumped up on top of her 50. Look at here, folks. She's broke that 50 quite a few times over the last 20 days, but she hasn't gotten over it. She has now gotten over it and has been sitting up there for a couple days. That is a power move. Our technicals don't show a lot of strength right now, but she is sitting on the right side of that 50. Let's look at our five day, five minute. Whoa, we got volatility everywhere. Hit that low bubble of 22 cents and it just went nuts. I see our 200 day SMA has made a drastic turn here, but it looks like she's rolling back down right now. Things don't look real positive for her right now. I can't even tell you where she's gonna go. But I'm not looking at greed to be running next week or next month. Honestly, I know they're going to be coming out with news and I'm not too sure that their news press is going to make everybody happy. I honestly just don't know. 
But when Bitcoin starts to rise, I fully expect this company to start to rise. I also expect all the Bitcoin that they're holding right now are going to grow in value. They lost a lot of money on all that Bitcoin when Bitcoin fell. Well, when it starts to grow, they're going to just, all them coins are going to become worth more and more and more. It'll be an exponential growth. So when Bitcoin starts growing, I think this company is going to do well. In the meantime, they are selling electricity. They did what, 46% more revenue this year than last year. They're doing an average of $30 million a quarter. So it's not like they're going out of business. We're just waiting for them to start kicking butt again. So when Bitcoin starts kicking butt, I think this company will too. But I don't know a lot about crypto. Do your own DD, please. Last stock we're taking a look at came courtesy of Jeffro Sanders. Thank you, my friend. I do appreciate it. Jeffro turned me on to Lucy, ticker L-U-C-Y Innovative Eyewear Inc. And we'll get more information about exactly what they do when we look at their website. This company would make a good long hold. No doubt about it. But the company's making money right now. They've got some innovative technology that they've incorporated into their eyewear that I think is going to be very, very hot. And they've already got a lot of big names helping them push their products. They also had big news come out on Friday, dropping big names there as well. I expected to see a bigger bounce but I'm not too worried. I like what I see here. Lucy finished today on Friday at $1.37 with just under 5% gains. And she too is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. So let's take a look at what this company is all about. This is their website. We are over here at www.lucyd.co. Lucyd.co. They sell eyewear, the prescription glasses, the sunglasses. They sell all of the frames. They've got these very nice looking glasses, but that's not all they do. Check this out. Lucy D Light is smart eyewear that looks, feels, and corrects vision like standard eyeglasses and sunglasses. Open ear audio, a crisp microphone, and Bluetooth touch controls meet fashionable prescription ready frames at just one one to 1.4 ounces they're light enough to be your go-to specs all of these glasses you're looking at folks have their technology built into them and they've got lots of glasses that you can go shopping for this is on the market right now this site is live you can come over here find a pair of glasses that you like and buy them and check them out see if they're as good as they sound so what was the relative volume around this company on Friday about half. Whoa. Now it was the holiday weekend. It was Friday. You know, people were busy. The snow was coming down hard. So, you know, maybe there just wasn't a lot of activity on the market for that reason. She dropped from 1 million share average to 686,000 on Friday. Her share structure. Ah, oh, yeah, I did look this up. Look here, folks. We got a super small float. The outstanding shares is only 7.3 million. I looked this up. It is 2.4 million in the float. This is a great company with great technology and a great product that a lot of people are going to be able to make use of in a lot of different ways. You know, if you want to go gaming, you're going to have to use your prescription glasses if you wear them. Well, wouldn't it be nice to have the sound and talk to your buddies all with your prescription glasses as you're playing your game? I think it's going to be hot. So we got a super, super low float here. Financials for Lucy. Well, at the end of last year, she did $690,000. Quarterly, um, between $200,000 and $150,000 over the last three quarters. And again, they've got one coming out as well. And they are in the green. They are getting to keep money. Disclosures, we got anything over here? Uh... Yeah, we got that 8K that actually came out with the news. Let's take a look at that news. This is the news that came out on the 28th. Innovative Eyewear Inc. announces multi-year global licensing agreement with Authentic Brands Group for Eddie Bauer's Smart Eyewear. Innovative Eyewear, the developer and retailer of smart eyewear under the Lucy D and Nautica brands, is pleased to announce that through an agreement with Authentic Brands, it has licensed the iconic outdoor brand Eddie Bauer for smart eyewear. I also found this information over on their site that just dives deeper into this. Under the partnerships here, 
In late 2022, Innovative Eyewear acquired a multi-year global license, the Nautica brand, for smart eyewear and related accessories. As part of the deal, the owner of Nautica brand, Authentic Brands Group, is assisting the company with introductions to Nautica.com, independent Nautica store operators and buyers, and Sports Illustrated online store. The company has finished designing a dozen styles for an initial line of Nautica smart eyewear and expects to launch the line in the first half of 2023. Lucid products began to be carried on Dick Sporting Goods, which has over 800 stores. Lucid products began to be carried on Academy Sports and outdoor main sites, which reaches retailers to 260 locations. Lucid partnered with Everest.com, a new sporting good marketplace. And in 2022, the company grew its retail presence to 250 locations carrying Lucite in store. So they got a lot of big names here. Dick Sporting Goods, Sports Illustrated, Authentic Brands, Eddie Bowers. All these people are going to be selling their glasses. And how many people want that technology right there? You don't want to have to pick up your phone or pick up goggles. You just want to be able to touch it. Hello, who is it? Oh, yeah, here, let me turn you up. Yeah, I hear you perfectly now. This is a great idea. I think it's going to be hot. But again, I'm always telling you, do your own DD. We each have our own feelings about things. But I like the way this makes me feel. Let's go take a look at that chart. Lucy, you got some splaining to do. <laughs> this is ticker L-U-C-Y, Lucy. We are looking at a six-month, four-hour chart here. We got a high bubble back here of $7 in August, and four days ago, we hit a low of 70 cents. But what you need to pay attention to is that breakout right there folks she's been under this 50 day sma for months without any attempt to even get on top of the 50 and then she hit this low bubble and she bounced she got on top of her 50 not only so but she has tested the 200 day once tested it twice and right there she's tested it a third time and you can see she is on an up incline right now she had a lot of volume come in on the day the news came out that was the 28th not a whole lot of volume on the next two days but look at our technicals. There is no interruption in their strength, even though the price fell real hard here. Do you see it showing up here? No, a lot of strength. Everything looks great. The only thing rolling around is our RSI because the RSI is the price line. Change all these price bars into a line, it would look like that. So as this is rolling across the board, so is this. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour view. So she was not doing a whole lot until she hit that low bubble, and boy, what a bounce that was. She went from 70 cents to a dollar. That's a 30 cent jump. What is that, about 40, 45% gains? Now I always say, if a stock, if a company has value, a low bubble is nothing more than a flashing for sale sign, a blue light special, if you know what that is. People know the company has value, they'll come buy up shares when it hits that low bubble. And that's what it looks like happened here. Pushed herself right up on top of that 50. She did fall back, but boy, she stuck it. Stuck right to that 50. Then came the news, she shot through that 200, hit a high of $1.79 pre-market. That's the nice thing about these NASDAQ stocks and New York Stock Exchange stocks. We can trade them pre-market. No special qualifications or permissions. Just remember to change your order time period from day to day plus extension or good till cancel plus extension. And you can get in there as well. But once the bell rang, that game was over. She started giving away all those gains, fell all the way back down, but didn't even touch the 200. Never touched it, bounced back, and it looked like it was the 20 20-day SMA, my orange one here, that she started respecting. She started bouncing off of that, and right now it is sitting on that 20-day SMA. And here comes our 50-day SMA right behind it to give it a push, to give it some strength. Our technicals, they look weak, very weak right now on the one-hour chart. Five-day, five-minute chart. All right. 
So she got on top of her 200 on the five minute chart, bounced off of that 200 to get that high, came down and has been wrestling that 200 and is sitting there right now on her 200 day SMA. And the technicals aren't showing a whole lot of strength, but she's had a lot of fall once that bell went off. But you can see she's trying to hang on tight. She's hanging on to that 200. She is not trying to crush it, but our technicals don't show any strength right now doesn't matter. Not in my opinion, but your opinion matters. So go do your own DD, folks. They've got hot products, hot technology, which is probably going to catch fire. When people start getting a little bit of extra money, we could use some. People are going to start buying gadgets again and prescription or sunglasses that have Bluetooth audio microphones hooked up to them. That's going to be hot, especially when they look good and say Eddie Bauer on the side or something like that. So I would keep my eye on Lucy definitely and watch her warrant let's take a look at that warrant real quick almost forgot about her see what we had she was at a low what day is where here that's the 28th right here whoa the warrant jumped strong on that news she jumped from about 8.8 .8 cents up to 32 cents you're looking at just under 400% gains, 350% solid. Wow, that was a big jump. That was only five minutes. It didn't last long, but look, she stayed up here. So you had a long time to take some of your gains if you had gotten in here. So that's why we like warrants. Like I said, with just a little bit of volume, you can see warrants jump fast. You can get hundreds of percent gains very quickly. Don't get greedy. You don't have to stick around long. See a big jump? Take it. Just take it. If it keeps on going and you miss some, who cares if you got hundreds of percent gains in five minutes, right? Lucy and Lucy. CW. They got hot technology and a lot of companies that are going to be pushing their products. I like them. I think you will too. Geez, I got to be careful with my ego. Seems to me the stocks that people bring me are more interesting than the stocks I bring you. <laughs> Those were some very interesting stocks we had today. Soundhound AI, Gree, the Bitcoin company, and then we had Lucy, which has the new eyewear. I think all of them are hot. I think all of them can make us some money, each in the right time. Lucy probably right now is a good time to consider getting in because she looks to be ready to break out and start growing. Gree, once Bitcoin starts growing, Gree's got a lot of money to give you. And sound, well, sound is just waiting to explode. That is technology that all of us are going to be using. It's going to permeate our society. We're going to see it everywhere. But do your own DD. I'm sure you'll find at least one or two of them that interest you. Maybe all three. <laughs> Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.